Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are a plant-based fitness nutrition company. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. With that said, we are going to be talking about the impact of exercise on uh, this particular study, which was done on people with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes and full blown. So it's, a, it's an interesting study because, um, and it's timely because uh, I've seen a couple of recent social media posts by people in health groups, actually plant-based health groups, um, like T. Colin Campbell's group, which I really enjoy. If you haven't checked it out, you should, because there's a lot of good discussion, a lot of good sharing of materials there. And even got a uh, email because I'm on the email list for T. Colin Campbell love his work, um, love what he does, but he had mentioned in the email uh, that, uh, you know, weight loss is 80% diet and 20% exercise. <clears throat> and then someone had posted in his group saying that uh, exercise was not important and that diet was more important and that you can't exercise your way to, um, to health and weight loss. Okay, so one, that's just false. You can actually. But two, that's not something that we should be comparing against each other. Um, it's not exercise against um, <laughs> and diet. It's diet and exercise go well together. And that's what I've been preaching all, all along is proper nutrition, great whole foods, and proper exercise. It's like saying the brain is more important than the heart. Well, no, if you don't have a brain, you die. If you don't have a heart, you die. So they're equally as important. Now, you can argue that the brain controls more things than the heart does, but is it more important? No, they work better together. <laughs> We're only a human being, a living human being, when we have our heart and our brain fully functioning and operating together. So I, I, I'm really trying to caution people out there pitting exercise against diet. Like, you know, exercise doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It matters for joint health, brain health, microbiome health, liver health. Exercise affects almost every single part of our body. Um, vascular health, blood pressure. I mean, there's so many things. There's almost nothing that exercise can't positively affect uh, when done in the proper uh, approaches for the proper uh, person, their age group, their gender, their, their weight, their ability to exercise, all that must be included. But exercise should go hand in hand with diet and they work tremendously together. If you saw my last video on Elbaba and all these amazing health benefits of Elbaba, an amino acid that is produced when we exercise. But exercise not only does that, you know, when they were talking about weight loss, uh, you know, saying that, oh, this exercise only burned 600 calories and you can eat 600 calories and just a bunch of snacks which is which is absolutely true but that exercise doesn't just burn 600 calories in that moment that's not the importance of that exercise bouts of exercise can last 24 48 hours or longer in its positive effects now i won't dive too much into the science but it affects uh, AMP kinase, it affects PPAR, it affects uh, UPC, it affects so many different um, biological mechanisms that are triggered, that are upregulated, and that can be propelled for even weeks uh, after you exercise. That's how important exercise is for continual long-term health, for continual long-term burning. Let's take exercise and gaining muscle, for example. Just two and a half pounds of muscle gained through exercise, that's uh, weight-bearing exercise, resistance training. Just two and a half pounds of muscle gained will burn a pound of fat every single month. And that's even at rest. 
So once you gain that muscle and if you maintain that muscle, that is burning calories all day long, every day, all day, even while you're sleeping, it's burning calories. This can help you maintain this. When we, as we get older, we tend to exercise less. And it's that less exercise that says, well, your body says, if you're not using that muscle, I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to get rid of it because it burns up energy. And our body is trying to protect, not waste energy. So what it does is get rid of that muscle because you're not using it. Well, now that you've gotten rid of that muscle, you think, well, I've always eaten 2,400 calories a day and that kept me healthy. Why am I gaining weight now that I'm older? Well, the big difference is you have less muscle, burning less calories every single minute of every single day. And that's the big reason why people, as they age, get fatter. It's because they're carrying less muscle. They're less active. They have less of these mechanisms like AMP kinase, which has a whole cascading effect. It's a self-signaling mechanism that has a whole cascade effect of, or like Eldaba, like we talked about last week, which changes white fat, stubborn fat, stored fat into brown fat, which is full of um, AMP kinase, but also of uh, mitochondria, which can turn that fat quickly into usable energy. Brown fat is much more usable, less harm to to, to liver, uh, to trunk fat, which is fat that's stored in, inside, like around our heart, which can clog up the heart and things like this. So this is really important. How many positive health benefits, improved sleep, better sex, improved um, mood, improved brain health, it even affects our microbiome. As we exercise, we are actually changing the diversity of our microbiome just through exercise, not diet, just exercise alone. That's why it's so important. Now, you know, to their point, can you exercise your way out into good health? No, that's not a good approach, but it's not either or, it's and. <laughs> Combine exercise with a diet for amazing health benefits. That's what we should be focusing on, not pitting exercise against diet or making diet better than exercise. You know, like the, the email that came out was 80% diet, 20%. Well, when we talk like that, we minimize the important. And what we're saying to the people out there, especially coming from big influencers like T. Colin Campbell, who is, is very impressionable to, uh, makes a big impression on people when they say, oh, well, 20%, well, then it doesn't matter. Then I don't need to exercise. I'll just focus on my diet. Well, that's a big mistake. Look, let's take joints for an example. Joint health is very important for all of us as we age, especially. Joints have no blood vessels within them. And why is that? Because your joint is moving. So if it's constantly in movement and stuff like that, those can easily get damaged in joint tissue, cartilage, tendons, things like that. So the way cartilage actually gets nutrients into the cartilage and waste materials away from it is actual movement. By moving it, you are pulling stuff in and pushing stuff out. So it's the actual movement that is causing the health of the joints. And when we stop moving, when we become sedentary, this is when a whole cascade of negative effects can start to happen. Uh, we know that exercise can be an important aspect of preventing um, uh, like type 2 diabetes. So let's get to this research. What does the study say? Well, let's look at the study. It looked at 908 men and women, average age in their 50s, and did it for 12 months. Now, uh, 900 is a little more than that, but 900 people uh, actually completed the study. This was published in the journal Diabetes, uh, which is the journal of the American Diabetes Association. So what they looked at was... Uh, they have a standard protocol, uh, which is what they call lifestyle intervention, which is changing what's going on with the person to see what effects uh, can help them with their diabetes. So their lifestyle intervention or LI was reduce the fat intake to just 30% of your total energy intake. Now, I think personally, you could probably go lower than that and get benefits out of it. You don't wanna to go too low as 
we require essential fatty acids like polyunsaturated fatty acids or omega-3s and 6. Those are essential, meaning we have to have them in our diet uh, because we can't make them. So you want to get that fat low, but not too low. Okay, so the lifestyle intervention was a reduction of fat intake to 30% of total energy intake, a reduction of saturated fat to 10%, and an increase of fiber to 15 grams of fiber for every thousand calories burned. Average person is probably going to use like 2,000. So you're talking about 30 grams of fiber, which is actually a pretty decent uh, amount of fiber, uh, considering that um, uh, about uh, uh, 24, 25 grams of fiber is, is what's considered within the healthy range. Now, me personally, I'm doing over 100 grams of fiber almost every single day because I'm on a plant-based diet. And I think actually more fiber is probably going to show that we have much more health benefits of it, especially for our microbiome, which then can have effects on our immune system and other health benefits for like inflammatory systems. Um, so the participants in the conventional intervention group only had um, were uh, advised to perform three hours of exercise a week. So then they said, okay, well, if that is only getting so-so results, and here's, here's the results that they had in the studies of, of those, where they had in one study, only 40% of the participants accomplished regression to normal glucose regulation, which is coming out of type two or, or diabetes or pre-diabetes into more a safe zone where normal glucose regulation, normal insulin production and utilization and sensitivity was happening. So it gets them out of that danger zone. So that means 60% were not responding to this lifestyle intervention of increasing the fiber which is all coming from plants. So basically increasing your plant intake and reducing your saturated fat and especially total fat intake, which is mostly coming from animals in the standard American diet. So they're basically saying eat more plants and, and, and consume less animals because we know from multiple studies out there, the, high, the higher uh, animal consumption, especially higher in protein and saturated fat increases the risk for diabetes. That's been well established in the uh, literature. So um, what we look at next is the study. So they said, all right, so we'll do one group with three hours a week of exercise and the other group would double the amount, six hours a week of exercise. So what did they find? And I'll read it verbatim, uh, quoting directly from the study. People at high risk, these in individuals who produce too little insulin or suffer from fatty liver insulin resistance were randomly uh, assigned to receive the conventional lifestyle intervention according to the diabetes prevention program. That's the program that they set up or a more intensive intervention with double the amount of the required exercise. The results showed, this is verbatim quote, the results showed that more exercise, more intensive lifestyle intervention helps people at high risk improve their blood glucose and cardiometabolic levels and reduce liver fat content within the normal range. Conventional LI was less effective. Okay. So here's what this study is saying, basically. Only thing in these two groups, we have both of them on a low fat diet, we have both of them on a high fat, uh, high fiber diet. The only thing we're doing is doubling the amount of exercise, increasing the intensity and, and frequency of their exercise. And boom, those with the higher risk, those are the ones that have the higher risk of death or advanced disease states debilitating. Remember, number one cause of blindness in the United States, diabetes. Number one cause of amputation in the United States, diabetes. These are severe uh, repercussions of not doing this. And the sad thing is diabetes is, is almost 100% type two diabetes to make clear, not type one, which is uh, autoimmune um, disease. But type two diabetes is by diet and exercise. But this study showed of the two groups, 
only the ones that had increased exercise actually got into normal range within the period of time, within that one year period of time. Now that's amazing. This is showing you how important exercise can be for people to include this along with diet to help them accomplish the goals that they want. Get that body fat down. And in this case, that body fat, not just subcutaneous fat, which is the fat on the outside of the body, but more dangerous, the trunk fat or the uh, fat that's stored in the liver and in and around the internal organs, that's the dangerous fat. That's the fat that can put you at risk for real serious health conditions. Um, so this was a great uh, you know, study that showed this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on the screen because I want to show you all of the metabolic factors. Now, this may be too small for some of you to see if you're at home watching this later or whatever. And, and if you're watching on Amazon, sorry, um, you can't see this, but the graph is directly from the uh, study. So you can check out the study. Um, I'll call out the study for you. So if you're watching on Amazon, you wanna type in the study in Google and look up the study, you can see the graph yourself. The study is different effects of lifestyle intervention in high and low risk prediabetes, results of the randomized controlled prediabetes lifestyle intervention study. It's called the uh, Pre-Diabetes Lifestyle Intervention Study. So to make it real short and easy to look up, you can just Google PLIS, which is the Pre-Diabetes Lifestyle Intervention Study. PLIS, and you put in study right after that, and that should get you to the study. So the graph that I've got up on the screen right now for some of you watching, I'm gonna talk you through this because this is pretty impressive. The top graph up here, Okay, so this one on the left-hand side is showing the low-risk group and then on the high-risk group. I'm gonna talk specifically about the high-risk group, which is up here on the uh, right-hand side. So you look at the first one, this is glucose. You can see the red line is the ones that were exercising six hours instead of three hours. Boom, their glucose, blood glucose drops significantly. Then you go down to the next side, insulin sensitivity. We know that exercise increases insulin sensitivity. And remember, what is type two, two diabetes? It is uh, insulin resistance. That's when insulin can't work, it can't connect to the, the cells and, and pull the sugars in. This is showing, boom, once again, exercise increased insulin sensitivity. That's a positive thing. That means your cells can soak up and utilize that energy and not have it glycate or turn into harmful chemicals that could damage the eyes, the kidneys, the liver, lots of different functions of the body. The next one down is hepatic fat. Hepatic just means liver. So liver fat, liver is one of the first organs that the body stores fat in. Why? Because the body can quickly break down that fat. So it stores it in the liver. It's broken down in the liver to utilize for energy. So the body will start actually accumulating, but too much fat actually starts to uh, cause dysfunction in the liver and a cascading amount of effects that can cause damage and disease states. So a fatty liver or non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome is what it's normally called. This is a big risk factor for diabetes and for a whole host of different disease states. This is what you don't want. And boom, once again, only exercise. They didn't change the diet at all, just increased exercise and hepatic fat dropped as well. And then finally, the total uh, cardiovascular health ratings. And this one dropped increase dropped the most so the risk of cardiovascular events heart attacks stroke high blood pressure hypertension all of these are what you call cardiovascular disease states these dropped even more and remember that's the only thing they changed was exercise they did not change diets between these two groups at all it was the same direction between the two groups only one was exercising more and all four of these metabolic factors insulin, glucose, 
fatty liver and cardiovascular health all improved just by doing exercise. Now, exercise is not everything. Yes, you need a better diet. Yes, you need more plants in your system, both for your microbiome health and your overall health. But this is how important exercise, when coupled with a healthier diet, can dramatically improve your health. And for many people, especially those with type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, could be a lifesaver. Get out there, exercise, move for your joint health, for, for all of the reasons, all of the good reasons, uh, better mood, better sleep, uh, bone density. Resistance training increases bone density. We know this, working out with weights increases bone density and better than anything else. As a matter of fact, that's why we have a bone structure. If you take people into outer space where there's no gravity pulling down on us, our bones just actually deteriorate and can evaporate completely because our body says there's no resistance or weight. We're bearing weight because of gravity on this planet. It's pulling us down to earth. And that weight pulling down means that our body puts up a structure bone, bone density. So when you exercise, you are increasing the weight. This is interesting, like a dichotomy between overweight people. When you look at overweight people, they actually tend to have higher bone density, even though they're unhealthy, right? <laughs> doesn't seem to make sense, but it makes sense when you're carrying weight. Another uh, incidence, and I just talked about this on, is uh, women moving from childbearing years into menopause and postmenopausal. Well, your body knows as a woman that you could become pregnant. And when you can become pregnant, you're going to be carrying a lot of extra weight, you know, up to 20 pounds or more even, um, depending on how much you eat, how much you take, how much the baby weighs, all of that good stuff. But you're going to be carrying an extra load. So your body is storing and keeping extra bone density for you. But as you move into menopause, your body says, okay, no possibility of having a baby. We're not gonna be carrying that weight. Let's not carry all this extra bone. So let's start reducing the amount of bone density. Now, I think this has been misinterpreted as, oh, all women when they go into menopause start losing bone and that's a panic and you gotta do all kinds of stuff. Some of this, and, and, and look, again, talk with your doctor to make sure that you're not actually in osteoporotic or osteopenia, uh, which is the precursor to osteoporosis. Make sure you're not heading in that direction, uh, that you're getting enough vitamin D, vitamin K, calcium intake, magnesium, those sorts of things. But some of that is going to go away just because you don't need it because you're not going to bear a child at that point. Your body knows this. So there are things that our body does to move away as we change, as we age, but there's things that we can do understanding these processes to help combat them. That is improve your exercise and improve your diet. That's why I do what I do. I am all about health through fitness and nutrition, plant-based nutrition, because that's where people can gain the most health benefits by combining those two. Do the right nutrition, eat whole food plants, and get out there and do some exercise. And it doesn't have to be weight training. It can be Pilates, it can be yoga, it can be basketball. It can be just get out there and move and do it with vigor, with intensity. Because remember in this study, three hours a week, not so good. Higher risk for diabetes, higher risk for death. Six hours a week, which is basically getting some exercise almost every day of the week big improvements in all your cardiometabolic factors, which you saw in the graphs there, insulin sensitivity, glucose control, um, cardiovascular health, fatty liver, all of these can be improved simply by increasing your exercise. So my three tenets, as always, exercise frequency, which is consistency. Be consistent with your exercise. That's where you're gonna get the best health benefits. Number two, intensity train with intensity whether you're doing yoga or whatever put some energy into it put some activity into it get your cardiovascular health up this is really important and then third is nutrient density if you follow those three tenets uh, consistency intensity and nutrient density 
you are going to have some great health benefits. Also, make sure you get good restful sleep. Make sure you're plenty hydrated. Reduce your stress level. Stress is a killer. Have loving relationships and make sure you're getting some good clean air in. Those things and you can enjoy your life. Share a, a prosperous, healthy life with those you love and enjoy it. Thanks for joining me on this one. I won't be here uh, next Thursday. <laughs> I am moving. We're getting closer to the beach so I can get more clean air in me too. That nice ionized air that comes off of the ocean help improve my health and get some good vitamin D soaking up from the beach. So we're moving to the beach and uh, I will be uh, doing that move all next week. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks, but I'll be back every Thursday after that uh, to give you more great information, all the latest research that's telling us eat more plants and exercise and enjoy your life. Thanks for joining me.